Good morning. I hope you're all doing amazing today. Today is Sunday, November 9th, and actually, maybe the 10th. You, you'll know. So, uh, the thing that's, that God has really been speaking to me um, just this whole week and I, just in this season leading up to Thanksgiving is um, this idea of thankfulness, obviously. So, uh, I want to talk to you just a minute about the key to freedom. Now, uh, you know, not many of you have actually been in jail. I personally have not been in jail, thank God. Um, most of the time it's because we didn't get caught, right? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, it wasn't because you were innocent, you just didn't get caught. So, uh, but we, we all know whether you've been behind physical bars or not, you, we all know that what it means to be in prison. We all know what it means to be in a situation, in a mindset, um, that is like prison and you feel like you're, you're, uh, you can't escape. And so the, the struggle is how do we get out of these bars, right? I mean, the bars could be, you know, lust, it could be bitterness, it could be fear, uh, whatever it is, it's something that is a prison for you that, that is, um, suffocating. And we desperately want to be free from this, uh, but we don't know how. I think about the, the janitor that um, walked around school and, you know, he, he or she had this, this uh, mass of keys dangling from the belt. And, you know, you wanted to get into uh, the storage room or, or a certain room and, man, they were there and they could file through those keys, grab the exact one, stick it in the door and let you in. And it was just amazing how they knew which key went to what door. And um, so, I mean, you think about that. It's one thing if you're trying to gain access and entrance into a room. If you're trying to get into the storage room or a classroom or your house or whatever it is, that's one thing. It's another thing entirely if you're trying to get out of something, right? Um, so if you're in prison and you want to get out of these bars, you want to get free, uh, then you desperately want to know the right key for this cell so you can, you can get out. Um, it becomes, it becomes much more critical, much more important to you to find the right key. And what I found is that so many people are fumbling through life with this mass of keys and they're sticking in the hole and turning, sticking in the hole and turning and nothing's happening uh, because they don't have the right key. So I'm going to talk to you just a minute about the right key to freedom, the key to freedom. Now, I'm going to look at first, I'm going to be quick this morning and I'm going to start off here in Luke chapter 4, one of my favorite verses in all of Scripture. And it's when Jesus came to his hometown of Nazareth, where he grew up. And it says, as was his custom, this is in Luke 4, starting in verse 16. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. And he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. This is what it said in Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. Think about this. He just read this amazing powerful passage from Isaiah about the, the Spirit of God being on um, the prophet and the, the power that came on the prophet was to set people free, to proclaim the good news to the poor, to set people free, the recovery of sight to the, bl to the blind. And um, he sat down and everybody's waiting. Okay, now explain this. What is, what is the revelation on the, with this word? And he said, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. What he was saying is that I am the one the Lord was talking about who would come and set people free. Jesus was saying that he would be the key to freedom. He would be the key to freedom. Now, if we're talking about being set free from these, these invisible prisons of lust, of fear, of depression, of bitterness then 
what the Bible does, what, what the Word of God does is it gives you the answer. The answer to be set free from this is, is Jesus. Now that, that's so cliche and that's so, it seems so easy. Okay. So what does that mean? That Jesus is the answer, that Jesus is the key. I mean, how, how do you take Jesus and unlock your cell? That's the, that's the end. That's the dilemma, right? I mean, even if you did believe the word of God and you said, okay, I do believe Jesus is the answer that he is uh, God's solution for man's problem. Uh, he is the cure for sin. Um, then how do you take that and apply that to your life and, and get set free? How do you get set free from, from frustration and bitterness and anger and fear and worry and doubt and lust and all of these things? How do you get set free? How do you apply the power of God uh, to, your, to your situation? Well, here is the key, okay? Jesus is the key, but the key to applying the key is thankfulness is thankfulness. And let me explain. In Ephesians chapter 2, okay? You can turn there if you have it. If not, just listen. But Ephesians chapter 2, one of the most powerful verses in Scripture, it says, For by grace you have been saved. You could also replace saved with set free, okay? This is what Jesus came to do is save you, set you free. Uh, by grace you have been saved or set free through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So we have been saved by grace through faith. This is the gift of God. This is the gift of God. What is the gift of God? The gift of God is that he sets you free without regard to your goodness, without regard to what you have done for him. He sets you free as a gift. He gives it to you. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be free. Sometimes people are bitter and angry at God, you know, asking God, why am I in this situation? Why did you create me this way? Well, guess what? He didn't. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be full of life and joy and all of the fruits of the Spirit. He wants that for you. And He's given it to you. It's yours. You just have to take it. You have to take it. We In the, in the hospital, while we were in the NICU uh, watching Addie, we've gotten close to several of our nurses. And one of our nurses we had a chance to pray with the other day. She uh, you know, took Nicole aside and, and uh, was asking for prayer because she was, she was frustrated and she was getting bitter because she was in her 50s and she was still single. And she was wondering about the plan of God and she was, you know, asking questions why. And, and um, so when I came into the conversation, immediately the Spirit of God said, the key to her uh, freedom is thankfulness. And so I told her, I said, you need to walk in thankfulness. God has not only already given you so much, but he wants to give you the desires of your heart. And so when you walk in thanksgiving and go ahead and thank God for what you can't see yet, thank God for what you haven't really experienced yet, go ahead and thank him that he is working everything out for your good and walk in that freedom, walk in that rest, knowing that you have a good father who wants to give you every good thing. And so you walk with this attitude of thanksgiving. It is an attitude of faith. It's rooted and grounded in faith. You haven't seen it yet. You haven't experienced it yet, but you're thankful for it. It's not just blind hope. It's a solid hope because you have, you, you have encountered the one who saves. You've encountered him. He is your savior. He wants to give you all good things. He is your father. So trust that he, he has your best in mind, that he's working things out for your good. Uh, the way to, to step into freedom, the way to apply the gift of Jesus is thankfulness. What thankfulness does is it receives. Thankfulness is a receptive attitude of saying, thank you, I receive it. You can't do good enough to get set free from this prison. You must, you must wait for him to unlock it. He unlocks it for you. He is the key. And the way it is applied is through thanksgiving. It's just from receiving it. And so today... Um, Walk in thanksgiving. This is how you apply what God wants to give you. This is how you apply everything he's given you in Christ, is you walk in thanksgiving. 
You start thanking God for things that are in your heart that you haven't seen yet. You start thanking God for all of the things that you do have. I promise you, if you want to be set free from depression, from from bitterness, from um, frustration, when you begin to thank God for what you do have, all of the things you don't have will drift away. You can't think about those things and the things you do have at the same time. Um, I'll be honest with you, yesterday was not a good day. Yesterday was not a good day. Um, Nicole and I, you know, had our, um, yeah. So, uh, we, we were just butting heads all day. We were just frustrated with each other and just rubbing each other the wrong way. And it was just a frustrating day. And you know, what begins to happen in that moment is you start thinking, you know, about all of the things that she should do for me. And she starts thinking about all the things that I should do for her. And and you start thinking about all the things you don't have and the, wish you could change this and wish you could change that. And and what happened is we, we, we went to the NICU to see Adeline. And um, we both came to the bedside. And I promise you, within just a few minutes of holding this smiling, this uh, amazing miracle of God, I'm telling you, we weren't thinking about all the other stuff anymore. All of a sudden, it was we were just both so aware of the goodness of God, of um, the gifts that God has poured onto us, and suddenly thankfulness replaced bitterness. Uh, it, re- it replaced frustration and anger, and we begin to become more acutely aware of all of the things that He has done for us, all of the things that He was working out for us, and so. Uh, I'm going to tell you, rest in what rest in the goodness of God. Uh, begin to thank Him. Begin to open your eyes to all of the things that you have. Are you living and breathing today? Thank God for life. Thank God for life. Are you? Do you have a car? Do you have clothes? Do you have food? Begin to thank Him for those small things. Maybe you're frustrated because you have a vision in your heart and you it just won't manifest. Thank God for the vision. You could be a man or a woman without vision at all. So thank God for the vision that is still in your heart, still in your mind. Because you could not have that, even that, even that. So begin to thank God. I promise you when you step into Thanksgiving, you it's an attitude of reception. It's an attitude to receive the gift of God and to recognize all that he's already given you. So... That's the word for this morning. I hope it sets you free. I hope you can walk in peace and thankfulness and joy. Um, I hope you can be set free from condemnation. If you're living in any kind of condemnation that you feel like you're not, you're not good enough or you've let God down or you failed, guess what? It's a gift. Salvation and freedom that God wants to give you is a gift. And so all we can do is thank him and receive it. Thank you and receive it. Thank you and receive it. You can't earn it. He doesn't, you can't earn it. You can only receive it and thank him for it. So thank you, Father God, for for the gift of salvation. Thank you, Father, for all of the small things in life that you've given us, for the family, the food, all of your provision. Thank you for our, our daily bread, for every breath we take. Thank you for the vision that you've put in our hearts and our minds. Father, we thank you for what you're working out for our good. And we rest in you. We know that good things are coming. And we thank you in advance for that. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Love you.